All right. Um, so I'm going to give you 300 seconds about uh, why people build houses in Second Life and uh, why I think we could build different kinds of houses and why they might be more fun. So I'm uh, currently a PhD student at the Media Lab, and so we're going to take a quick tour through Second Life. So we've got lots of stuff that looks like this. We've got office buildings. Uh, this is a meeting room that office building, which I love because of the uh, 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 food table on the side. So you can, <laughs> meeting, you can go and like, get cupcakes and stuff. Um, and then we've got sort of malls and various kinds of commercial setups. So there's sort of two things that I think uh, drive people towards building things in Second Life that look really familiar to them. And the first, I think, is, is really important and we can't forget it. It has to do with style and wealth and fashion. And people tend to build stuff that represents themselves. So in a lot of ways, when people build a house in Second Life, it's a lot like them designing a profile page on Facebook. That This page is about showing other people who they are, um, what kinds of media they're interested in, um, what artists they're excited about, what music they listen to. Uh, and this is sort of a 3D visual way of representing that. So you sort of choose a style you're excited about. It's like decorating your home, even. And a lot of this extends to how you address your avatar, too. So it's, it's all about communicating this idea about who you are to other people. And also wrapped up in that is notions of wealth, that even though in Second Life everything seems to be sort of virtual currency and it's plain money, in fact, there are things in Second Life that cost more and things that cost less. And so when you go into a space in Second Life, you do have some notion of whether somebody is sort of rich in Second Life or poor in Second Life. So that stuff I think is, all, is, is really important. It's all about form. It's all about how stuff looks. Uh, but there's this other side to it that's more about how people behave in spaces. So this is uh, an abandoned dance club in Second Life. There are tons of places like this. Uh, and they are, in fact, often abandoned. But what's cool about this is that people build spaces that look a certain way to show people how they're supposed to behave. So in Second Life, spaces don't really differ functionally. That you can't really have megaphones in Second Life. You don't have different kinds of acoustics. You don't really have different kinds of lighting. And so you don't have ways to show people what behavior you should do in a space. So instead, people rely really, really heavily on how a space looks. So you come into a space like this, and it's very clear that this sort of adopts all of the form of a dance club. So you're supposed to behave in a dance club. You're supposed to socialize. You're supposed to go dancing. It's for meeting new people. So I think this is really where we can intervene as designers. So I think we can learn, to some extent, from physical spaces. So physical spaces use different kinds of characteristics like lighting, like acoustics, like materials, for influencing the kinds of things that do or don't make sense in the space. So we can go into physical spaces and have a pretty good sense of how they work based on the, sort of how they're set up, not just how they look, but also how they operate. And I don't, I don't really think we should bring all of these things directly into the virtual world. It's not about building lighting into Second Life. We're not about um, building acoustics into Second Life. But it's really about looking natively at what makes Second Life special, what makes a virtual environment special, what kinds of features of that environment are different than physical environments that we can play with as variables. I think Second Life doesn't do a very good job at this. So in Second Life, no matter where you are, you hear exactly as far away. Um, you can hear people as far away as anywhere else. Um, there aren't echoes anywhere. You can always click on anybody and get information on them, which is really different than in, say, a physical environment uh, where in a dance club, like, you only see people who are really close to you, and you can't hear people very far away because there's lots of loud music. And all that has a really big impact on how we behave in those spaces. But Second Life doesn't really have any of that. And so it really depends on this form aspect. So there's a bunch of different uh, things that I think you can play with in virtual environments that are fun. It's sort of a, a quick list. Um, the, the big ones, from my perspective, are things like avatar representation. That how you look in a space need not just be a function of what clothes you chose to put on that day. They could also be things like, um, it could be behaviorally responsive. It could be the way you behave changes how you look. So for instance, you can have a space where people who talk a lot sort of uh, a link is drawn visually between them. And so you can sort of get a, at a glance, see what the sort of social network of that space has been in the past. And that's something we can't do in Second Life, uh, or in, in physical spaces. Um, you can also play with the sort of movement controls, that your interface to this world can fundamentally be different. That's another thing we can't do in physical reality. So we see this a lot in games, that you can do things in games. You can play Madden, you can be this football player and sort of pull stuff off that you couldn't normally do in physical spaces. And you can do that too in a virtual space. You can have virtual spaces without gravity. And Second Life does this a little bit with flying, but there's a lot more we can play with there. Um, we can also change uh, how we represent identities. So we can build virtual spaces where you kind of turn the lights off. And you can interact as normal, but you don't necessarily know who else is in the space. You sort of turn off all those identity signals. You render everybody the same, and you turn off names. So that's just a little bit of a taste. I, and I've been doing uh, a bunch of projects around this, which I'm not going to get super into, but if you're curious about this, please let me know. So this one is a virtual foosball table. So you have a physical foosball table, and you have a, a virtual giant avatar-sized stadium. And so you can see little people <coughs> running around in the stadium. Uh, so we showed that at Ars Electronica. 
and I've got this sort of meeting room where where you are in the meeting room <laughs> is a sort of social signal to people, and it sort of aggregates information in space over time, um, which I think is pretty fun. So uh, you can go online, see more of what I've been doing, or shoot me an email, or find me at the conference. Thanks a lot.